If you're an Australian property investor looking to retire in Australia, then this video is for you. I'm going to share with you six simple tips to manage your property investment portfolio to ensure that you're not faced with some nasty surprises when you get to your retirement years. Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner, working with Australians all over the world. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of property, particularly Australian property when it comes to investing. It can be a fantastic tool to generate leveraged returns over time by sensibly investing across a diversified portfolio of property in the country. Now, where a lot of people go wrong when it comes to property is assuming that it's a great income asset when in fact it's a far better growth asset because often the holding cost will mean that the net yield is not that great, particularly when we compare it to shares. Now this really highlights the importance of proper planning, running your numbers and being prepared for what retirement's going to look like. So let's dive into the six tips I have to share with you today when it comes to retiring in Australia with investment properties. Number one is to simply review your property investment portfolio on a regular basis. Now, if you've got one or two or five or 10 investment properties, whatever the number may be, set a time once or twice a year is usually enough to sit down and assess how much growth did the property generate? What does the net yield actually look like? So when you factor in all of the incoming money, the rental income, and take away all of the expenses, what does that net yield actually look like? Consider the tax deductions that are actually building up for the property. Are you claiming depreciation? Do you have carry forward losses as a result of your property? How does the capital growth of that property compare to other properties in the city, in the state and in the statistical area? Now you can gather all of this data online and get a sense of what these numbers look like. Then it's important to really give some thought and reflect on should you sell the underperforming assets? If you've got a property that you bought for 500,000 12 years ago, that's currently worth 600,000, when the rest of the market has delivered an annual return of 6% a year, chances are there's something wrong with that property. It may just be that it's not a property that was ever going to grow a great deal in value and it's far more focused on yield, or it may just be that we got it wrong, we need to cut our losses, rip the bandaid off, and move forward. So don't ignore the importance of reviewing your property portfolio each and every year. Number two is to plan for tax implications of property. Now this is one we see go far too wrong far too often. There are two key taxes we need to be really, really mindful of. Number one is capital gains tax. If we sell a property, then we need to quite often pay tax in Australia on that capital gain. Now, of course, if we sell a property as an expat, as a non-resident of Australia, that tax bill could be much larger depending on the numbers involved. So of course, seek tax advice to work out what is best for you. But when you're starting your property investment journey, we need to give some serious thought to, are we going to sell one or two or three of these properties, clear some debt, invest in super, whatever it might be, and therefore, what are the tax implications? How do we minimize that tax before we've even incurred it from a planning perspective, obviously. The other big one to consider is land tax. Now, land tax, I would suggest, is one of the laziest taxes we have in the country, very similar to stamp duty, but it is a tax that we all have to pay as property investors. Now, the greater the land value, the greater the land tax bill. So as our property grows and appreciates in value, that tax bill could become infinitely larger, which impacts the net yield of our property. So if we are investing in property, don't just think about what the land tax bill looks like this year, run your numbers, forecast things into the future, and have a look at what that land tax bill could look like 10, 20, 30 years into the future when you're retired. Because by that stage, it may be too late to do a great deal about it. The capital gain may be such that if we sell, we get hit with a large capital gains tax bill. And if we don't sell, we get to keep contributing to the state government via land tax. So don't ignore the tax implications when it comes to your property investments for retirement. 
Number three is to optimize your rental income. Far too often we hear this phrase of, oh, I'm just gonna keep my rent the same for my tenant because they're so nice, they keep the property so well, they do the lawns, whatever it might be, whatever excuse or justification that we say to ourselves for not increasing the rent, trying to do the right thing. But what undoubtedly happens eventually is that rent needs to go up because the mortgage rates went up, or you sell the property now there's a new landlord and they jack up the rent by a much larger amount because they're playing catch up, or that person needs to leave the property and they obviously can't find something at a comparable rent because you've been giving them a discount for such a long time. Far, you know, far more often than not, it is far better to have a steady CPI linked increase or indexation in your rental income each year. <clears throat> Even consider writing it into your contracts Speak to your tenant about it before they move in. Speak to your property manager. Say, right each year, we're going to increase our rent by two and a half, three, five percent, whatever it may be. Obviously, make sure that the, the rules in your state allow for it. But don't ignore optimizing your rental income. At the end of the day, we make returns on assets in two ways: capital growth and yield or income. So if we're discounting one, then the other really needs to do all the heavy lifting. So don't ignore your rental income on your properties. Number four is diversification. Now this applies to property just as much as it does to shares. This doesn't mean you should go out and buy 25, $100,000 properties all over the country. But what it does mean is that you might look to buy two or three or four in different states, maybe different dwelling types, different areas, focused on different demographics. Australia, yes, it is one country. It is one market from a regulatory sense, but it is very much multiple different states with different economies built and driven by different economic factors. So don't ignore the importance of diversification when it comes to your investments. Number five is to plan for your retirement lifestyle. Now this sounds like a bit of an obvious one, but it's one that quite often far too many people ignore. So on this side, we want to consider, do we want to be managing multiple properties? Do we want to engage a property manager? What is our net yield going to look like? Are we putting some of these properties on short term rentals so we can go and stay there in our retirement? There is no one size fits all as to what the right thing to do is, but it's important to plan ahead and work out what your retirement lifestyle is going to look like. And of course, the net yield that we will generate from those properties going forward. So that's tip number five. And of course, tip number six, it would be remiss of me not to mention this one, seek professional advice. Tax advisors, qualified property investment advisors, mortgage brokers, financial planners, having these professionals in your corner is often going to pay far more of a return than the fees that will be charged and incurred. Whether it's reviewing which properties you should sell, how to minimize the tax implications from a capital gain standpoint, or even just giving you the peace of mind and confidence that you can derive the level of income that you expect in your retirement. Whatever it may be, seek out these professionals, seek out advice, and make sure you're on the right track. So there you have it, six simple tips when it comes to retiring in Australia with investment properties. I hope you find them helpful. Drop me a note with any comments you've got. Do remember to like, subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.